What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you, where we will actually be concluding our series of breaking down the zero running back strategy for the 2021 fantasy football season. We are back on Fantasy Pros doing a 12-team full-point PPR mock again. The difference being we will be selecting from that 12th overall position. As far as the roster, same as always, one quarterback, two RBs, two wide receivers, the tight end, a flex, and then five bench spots. So that's pretty much it. We can jump into this thing. And as we load, a quick reminder, if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, let us hear it in the comment section, whether you agree, disagree, and also check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. Get yourself a copy of the 2021 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. And great price, everything you could want, all the details in the description. But with that being said, let's dive into this draft. And as we mentioned, we're concluding our look at the zero running back strategy. So if you guys haven't already watched our first video on this, where we picked sixth overall, you know, I'll make sure to link that in the description. But the idea being here is that in the first couple of rounds, we are going to be employing the strategy, which calls for us to go pass catcher heavy instead of going the typical approach of going running backs in at least the first two out of the three rounds. So to stay consistent here, what we're going to do is select pass catchers in the first three rounds and then address the running back position afterwards. And with that being the case, we can make our selection here because we are on the clock and as we go, I do want to stress that I'm going to be pointing out what players I would normally select because, you know, the exercise of this is to judge the validity of a strategy like this and whether it's something you want to employ, but also to potentially poke holes in a strategy like this because anytime you go into a draft with a predetermined strategy, you might put yourself behind the eight ball in terms of ignoring the best overall player you would take. For example, in this case, I would be taking Austin Eckler 10 out of 10 times. But since we are going zero running back strategy, I'm going to go a pass catcher here. I'm going to go my highest ranked pass catcher in Calvin Ridley. That's at least left on the board. And then with our second pick, I'm actually probably going to go with Travis Kelsey, who, yes, he's not a wide receiver, but he fits the pass catcher criteria. And, you know, he's basically a wide receiver one at the tight end position. We could go with the tight end again later on, but you know, might as well just do it right now. I, I think it's not a horrible pick. I think Travis Kelsey, you could see him go as early as some point middle of the first round. So all things considered going Travis Kelsey here is not bad. He's one of the focal points on his team and getting a difference maker at the tight end position is absolutely, you know, a way to differentiate your squad. But here quickly looking at the draft board just to see what's taking place after our first couple of selections, if there's been anything crazy. You know, in the first round, nothing too crazy, pretty much chalk. But after Travis Kelsey, you see Najee Harris going in the second round, pretty much second pick in the second round right away. I don't like that pick one bit. Uh, that Pittsburgh offensive line is worrisome. And I think there's just too much hype surrounding Najee Harris, similar to a Clyde edwards Alaire last season. Then you see Nick Chubb, Austin Eckler, tremendous value in Austin Eckler. This is full point PR scoring. Same with Michael Thomas afterwards, DeAndre Hopkins, Cam Akers. You see her running some pass catchers then. A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, D.K. Metcalf, Darren Waller, Antonio Gibson at the end of the second round, also very good value. Then George Kittle, Patrick Mahomes, a running, or two quarterbacks, you know, Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. I actually, you know, think Lamar Jackson could very well be and should be the second quarterback drafted come September and August. I don't think that'll necessarily be the case because people are kind of scared off of him after he was barely a top 10 quarterback last season. But, you know, for the most part here, the importance is to look at our choices and our roster. So I won't spend too much time analyzing, you know, what's taking place before us unless there's something too crazy. And now, like I mentioned, since we're only doing this for three rounds, we get a little bit lucky here because, you know, normally you could go three wide receivers, but we can kind of spread out the potential quote unquote damage because we got Travis Kelsey. So then, you know, while we get Robert Woods here, who is going to be our pick, we can then right away go a running back and that's going to be Chris Carson. You know, at this point in time, you're going to start to see a lot of somewhat similar names because towards the middle part of these drafts, if they're available to us, we're just going to go with the highest ranked player on our board. 
And since right now we've gotten to the spot where we're just addressing the whole of the running back position, Chris Carson happens to be here. I think he's a tremendous value at this point in time. So I'm happy with the way this is working out. And, you know, if this was the real deal, this is absolutely how I would have addressed it, how I would have done it. And honestly, I probably, you know, would have gone Robert Woods, maybe or another pass catcher, I should say, with that third uh, pick, because I don't love J.K. Dobbins. I don't love Miles Sanders or Josh Jacobs or David Montgomery, guys that all went. I think there's a big drop in tears after Chris Carson. So for that reason, I think Robert Woods is actually a decent pick in the third round. Maybe, you know, you could argue Amari Cooper or something like that, but I, I think they're all close together. I like the addition of Matthew Stafford there. Not as many mouths to feed as there are in Dallas. So with that being said, I'm trying to see if there's been anything crazy here going on you know you see that run on wide receivers which kind of helps us because that that might mean there's some pretty good running backs available to us and that's the whole idea of the you know zero uh, running back strategy that in the first three rounds you know four rounds depending how drastic you want to do it but again i advise three rounds because then there's going to be a really big drop off at running backs that in the later rounds, you hit on some late round undervalued talent. And I think we're actually in a lucky position where we can do that because Miles Gaskin is still on the board. And I think that, honestly, I would have taken him ahead of Josh Jacobs, probably even David Montgomery or, you know, J.K. Dobbins. Uh, I think he's more balanced. I think that when healthy, he's the guy for the Miami Dolphins. They didn't add anyone else to really, you know, potentially take away that position from him. And, you know, J he has just as many question marks, you know, potential concerns, maybe in some other different areas as the other running backs that we previously mentioned. So we're going Miles Gaskin here. And now, you know, we're in another good position where we can go running back again. So we're actually in a pretty good position right now, all things considered. Normally here, I would I honestly just go TJ Hawkinson. And I'm kind of debating doing that. I know it's going two tight ends, but, you know, I think he's the best available player. You could go Mike Davis, and that's probably the smart thing to do. My worry is, you know, that the Falcons might add somebody and that Mike Davis loses a lot of value. And, you know, I realize that that, you know, it's probably some speculation. But the fact that we were able to get Miles Gaskin and Chris Carson makes me feel a lot better about going TJ Hawkinson. Yes, it's two tight ends, but I think it's two like top three, top four tight ends that have wide receiver one type of value. So I feel basically the takeaway better about having TJ Hawkinson as a flex play than I do Mike Davis. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going TJ Hawkinson and I'm not looking back because I think we're going to be able to get a decent, you know, some decent depth afterwards at the running back position, but we'll see if that's the case or not. So right now looking at what happens after a selection of TJ Hawkinson, there's some other tight ends, Mark Andrews, Kyle Pitts, Mike Davis goes a little bit afterwards, you know, a run on quarterbacks, guys like Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers in the seventh round, Jalen Hurts, Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford, some wide receivers beforehand. Unfortunately, James Robinson is off the board in the middle of the seventh round. That was a guy that I was hoping that I could get. So now we kind of have to pivot. And the guy that I have ranked highest available still would be Melvin Gordon. Don't get me wrong. I don't like the situation in Denver. But, you know, he's still going to get opportunities. I think it's going to be at the latter point of the season where Javante Williams potentially takes over or, you know, is it that 50-50 split? And either way, you know, what makes me feel better is that whoever we would have taken here is on our bench. So we're not forced to play them. You know, yes, in the case of buys or injuries, then we would. But right now, assuming health, I'm all right taking Melvin Gordon uh, where I am. Here, now we can potentially look at, you know, quarterback. We can just look at best available player. I don't necessarily love any of these other running backs. Let's see. Let's see what the situation is with quarterback. How many teams have addressed that position? So pretty much actually everybody other than us. So, well, I take it back. We can we can stay steady at quarterback. We can address that in the ninth round. And instead, we can just go. I guess still, you know what, build running back depth. Yeah, that's the name of the game here. We went wide receiver, tight end, uh, heavy early on. So here I'm going to go with the next guy that 
know, potentially you could argue maybe we take Javante Williams as kind of a handcuff to Melvin Gordon if something happens there. You know, we just own the entire Denver backfield, but I'm going to diversify a little bit. I'm going to take Ronald Jones, and he's a name that I've mentioned before with these uh, zero uh, running back drafts because we get to this point like in the seventh, eighth, ninth round, and you just look for value. And I do think Ronald Jones is a good value at that point in time. Now here, one of our picks is probably going to be a quarterback. So let's just go ahead and take Joe Burrow, who is my highest ranked quarterback left available. And now the question is, who do we take at this point in time? I'm looking at wide receiver, and I think it's transitioned to that being the better value. I really like Marvin Jones, so that's going to be the pick here. And then we've got two last picks to make afterwards, and we will be wrapping this thing up. But uh, I think actually this kind of worked out pretty nicely for us. You know, kind of the key was going tight end with one of our first two picks because, you know, we addressed one of the really tough positions to fill at tight end. So it's not like we, you know, we had three wide receivers and then we still have to worry about tight end later on. And then we also did ve- get very lucky with Chris Carson and Miles Gaskin. But, you know, I, we we draft what's available to us. And in this case, we got lucky, yes, but, uh, you know, we're not questioning it. So here we're going to probably wrap this thing up by going with Russell Gage, a guy that across all mock drafts that you've seen me do, I take in later rounds. You know, I put out a video just going over some really underrated wide receivers at this point in time. Russell Gage was on that list. So I'm going to continue targeting him while his value is still kind of low uh, before people come around to it. Now here with our last pick, looking at this potential talent, You know, maybe we go with like a James White, that kind of PPR based running back. Giovanni Bernard is there in Tampa Bay, you know, and kind of just a lot of backup running backs, wide receiver. I feel good about our wide receiver depth. So, you know what? I'll probably just take a flyer on James White. Yes, that's an extremely crowded room of running backs, but, you know, it could be worse in PPR scoring. You know, if if something happens, I think he, he can be a serviceable kind of floor option at the flex position with James White. So let's let's see what type of grade we get here. I actually think it'll be somewhat all right, but we'll see. So we get a C plus grade, you know, and for what it's worth, I think C plus, maybe B minus is actually in the realm that we belong in terms of draft grade here. Because again, I, I said it before, getting Travis Kelsey was the difference maker. If we went three wide receivers, I wouldn't feel nearly as good about our team. And then again, luck is a part of it. We got Chris Carson and Miles Gaskin. I think we got very lucky there. You could question in terms of us going with TJ Hawkinson in the sixth round, whether that was the right choice. If we should have gone another running uh, another running back. Yeah, someone like a Kareem Hunt, someone like a James Robinson, Mike Davis. But honestly, the first five picks... I'd arguably go exactly that way in a normal draft. You know, I just, it comes down to whether I'd have the courage to actually go uh, three pass catchers to begin with, because you take a lot of risk later on. It's it's not a guarantee that Chris Carson is there in the fourth round. I, that That's something that you take a lot of risk with. So we just got lucky. Same with Miles Gaskin, same with, you know, some other guys So I actually think that because things broke our way, you know, this was actually a decent draft and I'd be all right with, for the most part, with our roster. I got Travis Kelsey, TJ Hawkinson. I think that puts us at a great advantage at the tight end position, you know, potentially allow some trade options there. Our bench, I like Marvin Jones, Russell Gage, Melvin Gordon, Ronald Jones have some upside as well. I like Joe Burrow. So honestly, I'm giving this a B minus grade. I actually kind of like this roster. So in terms of overall big picture, when it comes to the, you know, zero running back strategy as we employed here, the best way that I would suggest approaching it is going with probably Travis Kelsey, one of those difference making tight ends with your second pick or your third pick, depending on what spot you were drafting in. Maybe that could be a Darren Waller if you're picking in the middle of, 
the draft order because it gives you an advantage at that tight end position and then only doing it up until the first three rounds because afterwards you're gonna have to hit the most important position no matter which way you look at it running back heavy and often which is what we did because uh four of our next five picks after robert woods were running back chris carson miles gaskin melvin gordon ronald jones but other than that i like the way this turned out hopefully it was helpful and you know was able to shed some light on potential advantages to this potential disadvantages and whether you want to employ this in your drafts moving forward if you enjoyed you know let us hear it in the comments section along with any other questions you guys might have also make sure to like subscribe and in the meantime we'll see you guys in future videos